season five and five. Their greatest challenge of all now faces them. The Braves must prove themselves and do something that hasn't been done in 10 years. Catch the Eagle, Brigham Young University. Catch the Eagle and the powers of the Eagle will be theirs. On the eve of the Utah-BYU confrontation, the Cougars have gathered at Salt Lake's Little America Hotel for team meetings and their usual pregame ritual of cheeseburgers and an NFL highlight film. For almost a decade, BYU has been one of the winningest teams in college football. Ten straight WAC championships, as many straight bowl games, and in 84, the national crown. Let's bring up Mel Ford! <laughs> During those years, on evenings such as this, when they must face a crucial opponent, former team manager Mel Farr transforms into the team's lucky charm. He will tear a whole phone book in half. I know I can do it. I just hope the team will take off from my part. Mel is 12 and 0. In 87, he ripped through the yellow pages in a personal record of 70 seconds. Cougar legend has it that Mel Farr's toughest challenge came before the famed 1980 Holiday Bowl. Yeah, it was the 80 because it took so long, and, um, and I just kept struggling and trying and trying, but I never gave up, and that was the key to that year bowl game. to the shores of the Great Salt Lake, we will fight our country's battle with BYU every November. On the hill where tailgating has become institutionalized, Utah's first loyalists enjoy a carnival-like atmosphere, perhaps feeling a change in the seasons. Yeah, Utah! <laughs> Don't pay attention to the guy in the blue jersey with the ball. Because he won't have it long. Utah is going to trump them. Beat them badly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Utah by five. <laughs> 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 Utah by a reminiscent cold day. A capacity crowd is expected. No more shadow boxing. Each team has sparred within themselves to prepare for what promises to be an aerial dogfight between Utah's Scott Mitchell and BYU's quarterback, Sean Covey. On the third play of the game, Utah turns to the back of the playbook as Eddie Johnson flea flicks back to Scott Mitchell. As BYU Scott Peterson intercepts. The Cougars perform a methodical drive, using the pass as a decoy. The Y marches on the ground to the Utah 26, in sure scoring range. Sean Knox recovers Matt Bellini's fumble. The Cougs are fourth, and Utah's Warriors plan to take advantage. Enjoying double billing, it's the Scott and Eddie show. Third down and two, quarterback Mitchell plays the straight man as Johnson delivers a 29-yard punch line.
third and seven and Eric Grimm gets into the act. Later EJ slithers in for the first score of the game. BYU has a sense of urgency to match their rivals. But the U of U defense refuses to be upstaged. Garland Harris full steam ahead to Sean Covey. Greg Smith focuses on the carom. The boys in blue give the ball up for the second time in two possessions. Both sides would exchange punts while the Utes could have stopped to wonder what if. Johnson showed off his best moves in vain, rushing by almost the entire Cougar defense but a holding flag disqualifies his feet. Then Carl Harry gets stage fight all alone. However, in the second quarter, EJ follows the end of the rainbow and makes a 62-yard fortune. From the two-yard line, it's 14 to nothing, Utah. Quarterback Sean Covey must desperately take charge for Brigham Young, but football is a game of teamwork. James Thompson breaks away for a set shot on Covey, allowing Sam Tosinga to coddle a six-point jewel. Down 21 points, BYU can't look back any longer and mounts an 80-yard drive. They prove they are still the deans of the modern passing game, turning it on mixed with the run. Matt Bellini puts BYU on the scoreboard for the first time with 7.40 left in the half. The Cougars seem to be planning a comeback, stuffing the Utes forcing Utah to punt. Rodney Rice waits. An alley of blockers is set. Rodney Rice in open field. He could go. And he will, but there's a flag down back at the 36-yard line. It could be a clip. The Crimson Tribe then takes advantage of their dejected opponent, getting the ball back after a BYU punt. Scott Mitchell sends the ball over the gods of the clouds to Carl Harry for 48 yards. With that reception, Mitchell surpasses Robbie Bosco's NCAA record for pass attempts in a single season. He would now set the precedent with 533 attempts for a season. Two plays later, Eddie Johnson is again the designated TD man. What could have been a seven-point game now backs up BYU into a corner with a score 28 to 7. The Cougars try to rally before the half ends. The Utes pressure Covey, but Chuck Cutler, BYU's catching stalwart, fights for the grab. With 36 seconds left in the half on the Utah 14-yard line, the Crimson coaches call a corner blitz, and Manny Saiz blinds Covey to force a fumble, recovered by Garland Harris. The half ends with a tale of two locker rooms. For the Cougars, they know they've been down before and know they can come back. They must block out the frustrations of the first two quarters. Utah's chief must worry about being over-anxious. It has been 10 painful years. Most of the Ute players were in grammar school in 1978 when the Utes were last triumphant. I think all the seniors just knew we wouldn't be denied today. They don't know what's inside of us because we've been kicked and we've been beat. To mount a comeback, Brigham Young must score on their first possession. On the second play of the half, however, Sean Knox notches his second BYU turnover. The blue defense digs in to hold off the university. 
the Cougars don't go unscarred because Wagstaff makes a 44-yard field goal to begin the second half scoring. 30-7, Utah. Head coach Lavelle Edwards calls on his promising freshman protege to lift his team. Twice in his young career, Ty Detmer has directed BYU comebacks as a reliever. The Cougars still have hope. He'll get the first down. He's still out going across the 40 to the 35-yard line of Utah. Detmer, who is cool and sure in an offensive pocket, knowing when to stay and when to fold. He uses two big plays to earn BYU's second score of the game. Thirty to fourteen, Utah, and the Cougars believe in themselves again. That's what you gotta do it. Do it. No, it's up to you. But Scott and Eddie haven't finished strutting their stuff yet. EJ on the Brigham Young thirty finds a clogged hole and spins for greener pastures. Scott Mitchell appears to be stifled and sacked. Now gets it away. Dennis Smith could score. And he does. Touchdown, Utah. Third touchdown of the year for the junior. 36 to 14, Utah. Before BYU has a chance to get warmed up, Utah's own defensive talent, freshman LeVon Edwards, runs in front of Detmer's dart, headed for Chuck Cutler. eight on BYU 16 and Mitchell finds a lonely Carl Harry who just burned his defender. <laughs> 43 to 14. Meanwhile Scott Mitchell the franchise breaks Jim McMahon's all time yards per game in a single season. Mitchell would average over 390 yards per game for 1988. The Utes have no time to gloat as Detmer shrugs off his last interception. Third and 15 on their own 41, and BYU refuses to give in. Matt Bellini prances untouched to inch closer, 43 to 21. Bellini made a miss, and he goes 41 yards for a touchdown. BYU's not done yet. Utah controls the ball on a steady drive when an apparent fumble is recovered by the Cougars as they plead with the referees to gain possession. How can you even question that? How can you even question that, baby? BYU gets a hopeful break, and Detmer and Cutler team up for 43 yards. But in the final seconds of the third quarter, Mike Salito gives the ball back to Utah to dash another drive. Down the middle, Dennis Smith. First down yard, Smith with great speed. Smith all the way inside the 20 of BYU. Later, Dennis Smith is admitted into the exclusive touchdown fraternity to shock the Southern rivals. Fifty to twenty-one. Denver all day deep for Anderson, and Anderson has it inside the ten. Tyler Anderson set up by a fifty-two-yard bomb. BYU quickly answers back to make the score fifty to twenty-eight. But again, the Golden Child and company don't flinch at BYU's never say die attitude. They return the ball once again to the Cougar end zone to allow the son of a preacher, Eddie Johnson, his last curtain call before the Utah faithful. 117 yards on the ground, 91 yards and catches, and four touchdowns in a single game. Fifty seven to twenty eight and before the final gun victory smells sweet to the Utah Braves. It is the most points ever scored against the Cougars in a Utah BYU contest over eleven 1 hundred yards of total offense between the two schools. The Utes defense forced eight turnovers 
The offensive line protected their signal caller, never allowing a single sack in the game. We just got together as a team and decided that we weren't going to quit, we weren't just going to lay down and die, that we were going to finish the rest of our season strong. We just knew we were going to win. There was no doubt about it in no quarter and no time of the game we were going to lose that game. You can't uh, blame BYU. you got to give our kids credit. They played a hell of a football game. And we know we can play. And after being embarrassed, we just decided no more. And when you've been kicked like we have and you get back in the fight, there's no quit. And you're going to win. And, and we won today. It was awesome. I'm really proud of these kids. They were a long way down after Wyoming. And, and uh, it's a great credit to their resolve to come back and do what they've done. It's uh, something they could build on. They gave me the you know, greatest memory I've ever had. Hey, it's, it's Coach Fossil's town now. <laughs> Hey, all right, buddy. Hey, all right. Coach Jim Fossil called on all his warriors to forget the past and join him on a four-game quest to catch the eagle.